Excellent. Welcome to the Metasploit team demo meeting. Hope folks are having a good week so far. Uh, here in Texas, we're in the thick of our May shower season, so be safe out there, fellow Texans. We've got some good updates and demos to share today from the team. So without further ado, let's hop on in. From our Metasploit development team, Alan Foster will be walking us through the latest and greatest with framework. Alan? Thanks, Chris. Um, so awesome, we'll jump into the new modules that have been landed in the past two weeks. Um, so firstly, community member uh, MD Isaac has contributed a new graph CMS module which leverages an unauthenticated arbitrary YAML write vulnerability to get remote code execution on vulnerable graph CMS targets. And we'll have a demo of this later. <coughs> and community member Pedro Ribeiro has contributed a new module called Microfocus OBR Command Injection, which is an unauthenticated command injection vulnerability in the Microfocus Operations Bridge Reporter. Community contributor Rob Finson has created a new IGEL OS Secure VNC module, which exploits an unauthenticated command injection vulnerable, um, vulnerability module in the secure terminal and secure shadow services. And this impacts various versions of IGEL OS, so check out the info on that. And our very own Grant Wilcox has contributed a new Chrome RC module, which was found in the 2021 Pwn to Own competition by Dataflow Security experts uh, Nicholas Bomstark and Bruno Keith, and I believe the module itself is based on R4J0x00's initial proof of concept. Uh, I note that this is another module that uh, must be paired with running Chrome uh, without the sandbox enabled, as it does not come with a sandbox escape itself, so mostly like CI environments or things like that. Uh, community contributor Tim Wright has added a new OSX Gatekeeper Bypass module, which exploits a vulnerability in macOS versions 10.15 to 11.3 inclusive. We will have a demo of that later. And continuing on with new modules. Uh, community contributor Justin Stephen has contributed an arbitrary Perl injection vulnerability uh, exploit module uh, for a vulnerability within X tool 744 to 1223 that allows for RCE when parsing a malicious file, uh, which contains uh, malicious, maliciously crafted deja vu uh, annotation section. So be careful during your next CTF Stego challenges uh, that you've updated your XF tool to the latest versions. And community contributor Tim Brown has contributed two new post exploitation modules, um, which is used for attacking Active Directory integration solutions run on, on Unix. And we'll have a demo of this later. For enhancements and features, uh, our very own Adam Galway has added, uh, sorry, improved rather, the HTTP client mixin uh, with a new cookie jar implementation, which correctly updates and merges the set cookie header responses when using the send request CGI keep cookies option, uh, which should help feature module writers reduce the required boilerplate for keeping track of their own cookies during, web, uh, during their web exploitation uh, endeavors. Community contributor Pingport80 has improved the binary exist function to use the command minus V or TACV uh, under the hood as an alternative to the which command as a more portable uh, solution. Our very own Dean Welch has improved MSFDB to work on additional platforms, uh, specifically Ubuntu uh, via the PG Cuddle cluster uh, binary. Uh, as well as existing uh, or remote databases with the new connection string option. And this option can be used to interact with uh, various database instances, including those running in Docker uh, containers. And that's as an alternative to running a database directly on your host. And this change also means that you can undo the previous workarounds that were posted on a how do I make Ubuntu and MSFDB work together. Um, so you have to sort of undo that effort, and then you'll be able to use MSFDB moving forwards. Uh, and community contributor Pinkboard80 has added shell session support to the post Windows Gather Check VM module. Community contributor Littleboy has updated the session notifier plugin to support sending sessions via Godify. And more enhancements and features. Uh, community contributor Hoodie has cleaned up the auxiliary scanner HTTP Dell IJAC module. Uh, specifically running Robocop over the file for co-quality purposes and adding the last attempted at field and the, um, sorry, to the create credential login function call to prevent a crash, as well as providing documentation for that. So thanks for that. 
community contributor who killed DB has fixed a Ruby warning with the Regetto HFS exact module, uh, which is a great fix as that will uh, ensure that it works with Ruby 3 in the future. And community contributor Tim Wright has fixed an issue in how some uh, interpreter session types would inconsistently run commands issued through the sessions tag C command. And as Jeffrey alluded to earlier, he has improved the Acunetics import uh, support to handle the newer timestamp support version. <laughs> so thanks for that. Awesome. Um, I just discovered that somehow our usual slide that tells people that for the latest and greatest, you can always go to blog.rapid7.com and read our Metasploit weekly wrap-ups. Uh, slide is missing. Uh, so I just verbally said that. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank everybody who takes their time and efforts to help uh, make Metasploit better with their contributions. So thank you. <laughs> Huge thanks. Uh, we can add that in post, sure. Sure. Awesome. Uh, moving on to Demos. Uh, first up is Shelby Pierce, and she'll be walking us through the Mac OS Gatekeeper Bypass module. Yep. Uh, yeah. So on Mac OS, uh, when you download an application, uh, that application will get tagged with a quarantine attribute. And so once a user attempts to execute the downloaded application, um, Mac OS's security policy or Gatekeeper will then kick in and uh, implement or, or, or use its checks to basically check if the, the application is signed and notarized. If it's not, a prop will show up and the application will not be allowed to run. Um, this vulnerability specifically uh, actually uh, is based on the fact that if you generate a file, an application um, without an info.plist file, uh, it bypasses all of those checks. Uh, so I'm, you can go ahead and start the video. So I'm first going to demonstrate what you're supposed to see. Uh, whenever you download and file, uh, it's just uh, a payload generated from MSF Venom uh, and then served up. Uh, and then showing uh, that it does have that quarantine attribute tag. So it should have those checks. And so again, you will not be able to execute that file. However, I'm gonna go and execute the actual module which generates a file without the info.plist file. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and download that same file and from Safari, I go ahead and download that. And then I'll check again and ensure that it does have that same quarantine attribute. And it does, uh, and then I'll go ahead and execute it. And you'll see that it bypasses all of those checks. So because it doesn't have a plist.info file, or sorry, info.plist file, um, it doesn't get classified as a bundle and says policy v in sys policy D, I believe is what it's called. And so it just completely bypasses all the checks that usually would happen if a, an application is not signed and notarized. So, yeah. Does this work against, I mean, how, how recent of Mac OS releases does this affect? Yeah, I think it's um, versions 10.15 to 10, to, sorry, 10.15 to 11.2. That's amazing. As yeah. a former Apple employee, that's pretty cool that that you can do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this awesome. is super hot too. Yeah. Lots of attention. They put yeah, so, so that was, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so that module was written by uh, Tim Wright as well. Fantastic. That's great. Oh, right. I just have to check my version and I'm like, uh-oh, I might be impacted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, note to everybody, go check your versions upgrade if there's a newer one available. Cool. That's great. Thanks. Uh, next up, we have Spencer McIntyre talking about the post-expectation modules for uh, Active Directory on Unix systems. I'm going to come over here. Spencer, you want me to start this up or do you want to talk a little bit? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get it started. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so this was a uh, community contributed uh, modules um, by Tim B. Uh, Machine that was uh, tested and uh, landed by uh, Smashery. Um, so this is a pretty great set of modules that try to increase our capabilities when it comes to gathering useful information from Unix systems that have been compromised through Metasploit that have integrations into an Active Directory domain. Uh, so on systems that are running SSS, uh, which is typically how they go ahead and 
uh, communicate and authenticate against Active Directory. It's going to go ahead and it's going to gather a number of uh, different useful artifacts for those systems. So as we're saying right here, uh, we've gone ahead and we have gotten our session and then we're going to go ahead and run the gather module to accept those uh, Kerberos tickets. It's going to be very helpful. And so here, now that we have those Kerberos tickets, we're going to uh, use secure copy to copy those up over onto a system that we can then uh, leverage them from, kind of trying to show um, the workflow of how an attacker may gather these, uh, these Kerberos tickets, which are uh, tickets utilized for authentication purposes, and to be able to go ahead and use them to gain code execution through the impacted WMI exec tool, which we're seeing right here. And so with those tickets that we were able to access, we were able to go ahead and authenticate to the MSF test.local system, uh, the DC, because that's what it had um, credentials on. This isn't, this isn't an exploit. This is gathering those, uh, those sensitive information uh, files uh, from those systems. And we can go ahead and uh, get that code execution. So thank you very much. Um, any questions on that? That's pretty neat. It's good to get that landed. Am I also right in saying there's uh, an external Metasploit module for running WMI exact as well? There is, uh, but I think uh, we currently don't have the capabilities to perform the authentication using a Kerberos ticket. That, uh, that's definitely something that we could uh, go ahead and take a look at as we see our Kerberos capabilities improving. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks. I think the video is just about done, so I'm just going to let it run out. <laughs> Boom. Cool. That's awesome. I think we've got one more demo uh, from Self Spencer taking us through the Redis dump module that was recently launched. That's right. This was a, uh, another uh, community submitted module um, that, as the name implies, is going to go ahead and it's going to um, connect to a Redis server and is going to be able to dump out some information. So for demonstration purposes, uh, the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is connect into a Redis system and uh, add in some information. Um, this would be very useful on a assessment where if you uh, were able to access the Redis password or if you had um, access to a, system, a Redis server that didn't have authentication, which I, I believe is the default. It may have changed recently, um, but at least up to a certain point, I'm pretty sure that there were no passwords on uh, Redis systems uh, by default. And then with that information, using nothing but Metasploit, you can go ahead and actually pull out uh, the information from Redis. Uh, which is very popular as a as a caching service. So there may be authentication tokens in there if it's utilized by like a web application or or what have you. Um, so we're going ahead and we're pushing in a few different uh, types. Uh, so we can go ahead and we see our list key. We have a few different uh, values in there, and we're going to go ahead and utilize the Redis extractor module here in a moment to go ahead and access those. So in this case, uh, I don't believe there's a password that is set. So we have that value or we are actually going to uh, set the password, go ahead and authenticate to it. And uh, there we have our uh, values and they were stored out into uh, the loot on disk. So if you see something that is uh, sensitive and valuable in there, you can rest assured that Metasploit has uh, copied it and saved it for you. Oh, that's great. And I, I do believe that's the same uh, behavior that they go for at the minute of being unprotected by default because they assume that they'll be running in a, a trusted environment. Um, and I believe there's recent changes to the Redis login scanner to detect that as well. Uh, I think potentially added by yourself, actually. <laughs> oh, yes. Excellent point, Alan. Uh, yeah. So if you do run into Redis systems on an environment, the, the login scanner was recently updated to also check to see if a password is necessary. And if it is, it'll continue to perform. So you can identify servers that don't have passwords as well. That's very Thanks. handy. <laughs> awesome. Uh, next up, we have a demo for the Grav CMS RCA by Christophe de la Fronte. Thank you. So this module exploits uh, an arbitrary config write update vulnerability in Grav CMS to get an authenticated remote code execution. 
Um, so please, can you go ahead and, and play the video? Thank you. Here we go. So we have an, ins uh, an instance of Grave CMS here. So the vulnerability is located in the admin component and allows an authenticated attacker to execute some methods on, of the administrator controller. And with this, the exploit can create a malicious YAML file to define a custom Graph CMS scheduler job. So this model does exactly this. It adds a custom job with the payload and wait for the, uh, the, the scheduler to execute it simply. So here, after setting all the options, we have the check method and we run it. Right, the scheduler is created, the job is created, sorry, and the scheduler will execute it. So there is a, some time to wait depending on how it is set up. And here we go, we have a session. It's pretty straightforward, just uh, one re request to set the job and just wait for the scheduler. Uh, so the, the admin component has been patched in version 1.10.10 and it has been released with the graph CMS version 1.7.9. So this is a separate component that is vulnerable, but, be, but this component is always shipped with graph CMS. Not a question, but that seems super handy. <laughs> <Nice module. laughs> yeah. Well, I believe that takes us into the attacker KB section. I'd like to just take a moment and thank uh, everybody uh, for providing provided demos uh, in the Metasploit section and uh, Alan for walking us through there. Thank you. Always great content. Uh, well, let's talk about Attacker KB, the attacker knowledge base, a website for discussing which phones matter and why. Just visit attackerkb.com. Uh, and from our Attacker KB team, uh, Matthew is going to share a quick update on some current work. And I think we have a demo. Matthew? Yeah, thanks, Pierce. So right now, AKB has in development uh, IPIMS integration for Rapid7 customers. Uh, those who have IPIMS accounts will soon be able to log into Attacker KB using that as an authentication means. And we also have uh, in flight some database operation enhancements. That's all we have uh, update wise. And then we'll turn it over to the next slide for series uh, demonstration. People, people like to see the demos. Let's do a demo. So uh, last week we added Twitter and a login to Attacker KB. So you can now log into Attacker KB with your Twitter account. So I'm just gonna do a quick demo of that. Um, one thing to note is that I already have logged into the site with my GitHub account. So this, uh, the, the backend kind of matches your accounts based on email addresses. So now when I log in with Twitter, I should be logged into the same account as my GitHub, uh, my GitHub account. So I'm gonna just continue with Twitter, redirects you, and voila, you're logged in with Twitter. Pretty straightforward, pretty cool. Um, and this is my normal Attacker KB account. So you can choose either if your email addresses are the same and you should be good to go. And that's it, pretty straightforward. Excellent.